Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Jack Lifton. How are you today, Jack? I'm pretty good, Tracy. Thank you. Jack, there's a lot of buzz on lithium-ion batteries on Investor mm -hmm. Intel. Can you tell us what the catalyst for this is? Yeah, what's happening is that the American car makers are finally stepping up to the mass production of lithium-ion battery-powered electric cars. GM, the Detroit Intergalactic Auto Show starts, I guess, in the next couple of days. We still call it international, even though nobody else does. And uh, GM is introducing the Chevrolet Bolt, its 200-mile range electric car, Ooh. which... Go which goes on sale uh, this year, at the end of the year, as a 2017, for $30,000, including your government kickback on, on tax breaks. So it's really cheap, and it's, it's good timing for them in the, in the market because Tesla's having a problem bringing their low-cost uh, car into production. So Ford's got a huge program, which at the Consumer Electronics Show the other day in Las Vegas, their pres current president, Mark Fields, announced a huge electrification program and and uh, self-driving cars and all that stuff and on top of that the the Chinese five-year plan coming out in March for the next five years mandates a switch to to electric uh, propulsion for cars to reduce uh, pollution in the large cities and the Chinese are actually targeting five million units a year by 2020 now uh, these are the drivers for for the interest in lithium-ion batteries. That, that's what's going on here. The, these very large-scale applications. And at the very least, uh, you're looking at millions of cars being made uh, by, by the end of this decade with using lithium-ion batteries. And I know that the companies here in Detroit, there are we have several lithium-ion battery companies, are very active right now. Now, it, to contrast this, or, or uh, on the other side of the coin, the national newspapers like the Washington Post are saying, well, the, the electric car f is another flop. It didn't work and all that. And what I've found in, in my life is that whenever the national newspapers in the United States say something isn't happening, it's for sure happening. And if they say tomorrow's weather is great, I'm, I'm getting my overcoat. They, they're always wrong, and they're consistent in that. I, I think that this is, we finally hit, uh, this is going to be a very good period for, for lithium batteries. Okay, so what I hear you saying is that the real demand is from China for lithium ion batteries. And I think you told me that the driver is going to be once again, you know, China for this market and that this industry is going to, in essence, mirror what happened with the rare earth industry. Can you kind of comment on this a little further? Well, I, I, I don't think we're going to have the um, silly season here with lithium because lithium is basically one item. Uh, and uh, its costs are very well known. It's it, today it's it's very low price. Uh, however, uh, in my opinion, we're, we're going to run into a deficit of this material in the very near term because, in fact, as I as I mentioned, it's not just China; it's United States also, which is the world's third largest car market after Europe, and then and first is China, uh, is now. Uh, going full steam ahead in, into electric car production. I want to point out something. People, investors in particular, do not seem to understand inertia. It takes a long time to design a car. And once the design is fixed, you're three, you've got three years to source the parts and you source everything. P people who think that because there's some discovery in a laboratory this afternoon, it's going to change the world of manufacturing are completely inexperienced. Things are set. They're going to make a lot of lithium ion battery uh, powered cars in the next, for the rest of this decade, whether they, whether they want to or not. The parts have been sourced. The, the factories have been, have been scheduled. They're done years in advance. The Chinese are doing the same thing. It's momentum here. Now, getting back to price. All right, lithium, to, I don't know what the current price of lithium is. Last time I looked, it was 6 or $7 a kilo. It's got to go higher because we're already at the limit of, of how many of these batteries we can make. And uh, another thing. There is no public company I'm aware of that's recycling lithium-ion batteries to recover the lithium, the electrolytes, the cobalt, etc. This is going to be, look for those companies, because we're woefully short of that. And one of the things you, lithium-ion batteries are not difficult 
chemically to to recycle, they're a little dangerous, be, be much more dangerous uh, than 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 let's say recycling lead acid batteries because of the fire hazard. So you've got to know what you're doing. This is going to be another market. I expect to see companies popping up now that are that are recycling lithium ion batteries. So we're looking at I'm looking at the whole supply chain. What's missing? Well. We have a little bit of lithium production in the United States. Note that not anywhere near enough for our own industry's projected production. So something's got to give because the Chinese, like as they are chasing rare earth companies, are chasing lithium companies. They're all over the place. And when, when a Chinese company buys a lithium producer or a junior that they think will be a producer, that material is for the whole market. They are short also. So it's going, it's going to be a race. There's, don't anybody bid lithium up to the price of gold. It isn't gold. Or maybe, maybe today, who knows with gold. But lithium is, a, is going to be a very active market, right, starting now and for the next five years. We'll see if the public likes these cars. You're, they're going to be offered dozens of models and millions of units. Okay, well, fantastic, Jack. You've just answered my next two questions, so I have one more for you, but I want to read this because it's it's very specific and we're notes from a conversation that we had earlier. Okay. Um, since the Chinese will be putting a major push for lithium-ion batteries and that their interest is really to benefit China, okay, we hear you, what no. should the U.S. be doing? Because I've heard on the grapevine, for instance, that the Department of Defense wants the U.S. to be self-sufficient in titanium. Okay, for instance, can you comment yeah. on this? And of course, Lydia. Yeah, uh, the, as John Peterson, my, my new colleague and investor Intel, pointed out, the lithium titanate, the electrode, uh, which is called lithium titanate, for, for lithium ion batteries, it gives you uh, maybe the best performance, at least laboratory wise. It's, it's not the cheapest one, and it's, it's not the, the one with the, the highest power. But it's, it's very good because it gives you a long-lived battery. I, I happen to know a company right here in Detroit, lithium-ion battery company, that is now switching over to the titanate electrode. Well, again, we don't produce titanium metal in the United States. We import all of it from, you know, our, our, our sort of sometimes friends, the Russians, and even the Chinese are importing from them. There is a push on to source titanium in the United States domestically, or at least from a friendlier place than Russia. So one of the drivers is the need for it in, in batteries, but the other driver is the use of titanium structural alloys in aircraft, missiles, uh, and, and strong lightweight construction. If we had titanium freely available, uh, you, you would see a lot of civilian uses, bridge uh, reinforcement, buildings, things like that. But titanium today is strictly an imported material. And this, I think, will change. I, I, know, I know personally of several nanotechnology companies that are looking at titanium to, make, as a, uh, to produce titanium powder for 3D printing. And this is another push. Uh, it's called the additive uh, issue. The Defense Department is is absolutely nuts for additives of high strength titanium, uh, even some steel alloys, aluminum to be printed, so parts can be printed. You know, uh, it was a fantasy a generation ago, science fiction. Now it's real. Uh, I understand that they're designing a system to be taken to the moon and print all the parts for for needed by, by a lunar colony. Now, this sounded ridiculous to me when I was a kid, uh, i.e. your age, but today I'm thinking it's real, okay? I, I, I've seen some things that surprise me. So, it, titanium, lithium, uh, these, are, these are hot uh, topics right now in, in, in the world, and in particular in the United States, where we don't produce enough, enough lithium, or as far as I know, any titanium. We have titanium all over the place, or but we don't produce the metal. This it's it's a chemical issue, which I advise people look on Wikipedia. You'll see the problem. Okay, but uh, um, it, it's the future. It's definitely the future. It's 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 here. 
speaking of the future, in about 120 days, we're, you're yep. going to be in Toronto for the Clean Tech and Technology Metal Summit. And right. uh, we're going to be talking about this in, in upcoming interviews. But uh, <coughs> with regards to the lithium ion batteries and yep. many of the technology metals required to make these, I'm trying to de uh, determine, and of course you'll be assisting, like you did last time, on the topics and the panels, whether or not this is the clean tech or the technology metals day, which 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 day are we going to have this discussion or both? Well, I think the, the public understands clean tech, and and they don't seem to understand uh, technology. Technology metals explanations require a bit of physics and chemistry, and and you know that that usually bores people. Uh, clean tech is easy to understand. A technology that's that pollutes less than the one being used now. That's clean tech. I, I would go with clean tech, Chrissy. Well, thank you so much, Jack, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.